friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Momo. I do DIYs, upcycles and sewing projects. Today we're going to be making a bandana patchwork skirt set. Bandana patchwork has been trending this year. I'm sure you must have seen this beautiful dress from Psychic Outlaw on Instagram. And of course the hundreds of homegrown spin-offs on Depop. Madison Lynn did a full tutorial for this dress. You can check it out on her channel. Then we have these garments with more detailed cuts and piece placements and homogeneous color palettes which I really like. I also like these dresses from Stoud which is a vintage inspired brand based out of LA. I love the way the bandanas are cut into triangles and pieced together and um, I'm sure I've mentioned this to you before but I'm a huge ethnic textile enthusiast and I have in my collection a ton of patchwork quilt release from India and Pakistan region. My main inspiration for this project comes from these geometric patterns from the rally quilts. These are more orderly and repetitive so they really satisfy my OCD brain. These patchworks are entirely made by hand by women in remote villages and one quilt can take up to a year to complete. So they are very very special, they do not use any guides or layouts to make these beautiful patterns. So it's, it's extremely special and I am so privileged to have these in my possession. I think each design is so beautiful and every time I look at them it just makes my heart happy. These designs are passed from generation to generation and they are very specific to each region and each clan. So anyway, this was the main inspiration for today's project. So hit that subscribe button, turn on the notification and let's get right into it. Let's start with the design process. I am making the skirt set with navy, red and blue bandanas. I decided to mix in some accent colors. Uh, for that I have chosen this yellow print and uh, I have some leftover polka dot fabric and elastic waistband from this dress. And, and I also have some leftover black and white uh, stripe fabric from my target dress challenge video. So I'm going to be using both of these today. I actually picked up some bandanas from uh, my local free cycle group, but to make the skirt set, I had estimated that I would need about um, 10 to 12 bandanas and I didn't have enough. So um, I bought some from my local craft store. They have a lot more color options available, as you can see, uh, pastels and uh, neons, and I think they're so beautiful. But since I already had the navy red and blue, um, I decided to stay with that color scheme. My bananas um, are slightly different pattern from the new ones that I bought but that's okay uh, because once the patchwork is finished I'm sure no one will notice the difference in the pattern. Let's start with the skirt. I am folding my red bandanas twice and I will mark and cut the triangles off leaving the center squared. I'm repeating the same cuts on the navy bandanas. I am using one of the triangles as a guide to cut the polka dot fabric as well. I could only make two triangles because I have limited fabric so I'll incorporate these in the top instead of the skirt. I laid out the triangles to form a repeating geometric pattern. I'm going to start sewing the first tier of the skirt together. One by one, I'm going to sew the triangles together and form a long strip for the first tier. I kept the width of the strip roughly three times the size of my hip. Next I'm going to introduce an accent stripe 
For this, I cut the black and white striped fabric into 2.5 inch wide strips and joined them together to make a long ribbon. This I'm going to sew onto the tier 1 strip. Next, I'm going to patch together the triangle pieces for tier 2. For this, I'm using the square pieces of the banana that I had left over. I will cut these in center into large triangles and I will piece these together by connecting the triangles. Once I'm done, I will sew these to the tier 1. Next, I'm going to be working on the blue accent strip. I only have three bananas in total which are blue so I'm going to join them together first and then I'm going to fold them in half and cut them lengthwise. Then I will fold these strips in half one more time and cut them into quarter width strips. I'm adding a black and white accent strip in the middle and stitching the blue piece with the second tier of the skirt. I will come back and finish the raw edge of the black and white strip in a bit. Moving on to the border hem, I am roughly cutting a 3 inch strip of the yellow fabric. I will join these lengthwise to make a long yellow strip. I'm adding a quarter inch black ladder trim between the blue strip and the yellow strip as an unexpected detail. Uh, for this, I will stitch the ladder trim to the blue part first, then I will flip it over and top stitch it. Then I will sew the yellow part to the ladder trim. Turn it over and top stitch that. This will give us a very clean finish on the ladder trim. And then finally finishing the hem by simply folding the edge of the yellow fabric and top stitching it. Let's work on the waistline piece. I wanted to introduce the blue and yellow color again at the top of the skirt to give my design some symmetry. For this, I will sew a strip of the blue to the top of the tier one layer and a strip of yellow fabric as well. I think 
the design still needs some finishing accents to pull the colors together so I'm introducing a thin strip of yellow across the black and white accent. Um, for this I'm going to cut a one and a half inch wide strip of yellow fabric. I'm first going to stitch it to the middle of the black and white strip all the way around and then I will fold it over and top stitch it so that it is aligned exactly in the middle of the black and white strip. I will finish the black and white stripe at this point. Um, remember there was a black and white strip that I had sewn with the blue accent. I'm going back and finishing that right now. I'm folding it over and I'm just going to top stitch it. The structure of the skirt is now complete. I'm going to lay out the skirt and iron it. The geometry feels very satisfying to my mathematical brain. It's a very symmetric and the color distribution looks amazing. I am very happy with this layout and it's time to put in the box pleats. Let's start with the box pleats. Um, for this I'm going to close the sides of the skirt and fold the waistline uh, twice which will give me like eight beads in total and I will pin the waistline on the folds and mark three inch from the top. I'm going to try on the skirt first. Um, with the pin pleats to make sure that it fits. The width of the skirt is about 8 inches wider than my maximum hip measurement so I can just easily slip it on and off. At this point if you need to adjust the pleats you can. Once you're satisfied you can now sew the pleats down to the 3 inch mark from the top edge. I'm then going to open the pleats up with my finger one by one and I will line up the middle of the taken in fabric of the pleat and match it with the sewed line and stitch over the entire circumference of the skirt top making the box pleats. As a final step, I will add the elastic to the waist. This is the elastic I used for the polka dot dress video and I will link the video here um, so you can check it out. I pulled the elastic around my waist to see how loose or tight I wanted it and then I'm going to trim and sew the edges. I am now going to hold the raw edges open and sew a rectangle over them. But first, let me just procrastinate for a minute, turn on my favorite podcast and text a friend to pick up some vegetables from his garden. Anyway, back to uh, sewing the rectangle to close the raw edges of the elastic. I'm going to fold the elastic in half and I'm going to pin it to the side seams of the skirt. Then I will fold the elastic one more time and pin to the front and the back middle points of the skirt. and I'm going to gently stretch the elastic to match the waistband and then sew them together. And this now completes the skirt. Let's start working on the top. For this, I started with my basic bodice block pattern and marked these lines for the patchwork. Each of these sections will be a different color of the patchwork. 
Uh, for the sleeve, I'm going to use my flutter sleeve pattern. I've done a, a full video on this uh, in the past and I will link it here so you can go check it out. I'm going to roughly lay out the fabric patches on top of the pattern to figure out the placements and then I will cut the pattern pieces out and start cutting out the fabric patches. I must admit this part was the hardest because at this point I realized I should have bought a few extra bandanas. So please don't make this mistake. Just buy a couple more extra bandanas in case you run out of fabric. I had to piece together some of the fabrics to make up for the pattern pieces, which is fine, but it was just extra added time to this project that I didn't need and I didn't think of it. So please don't make that mistake. I added the black ladder trim to join the pieces together to add some interest in the front and uh, I pieced the front of the bodice sewing the patches together one by one and then I ironed everything nice and neat. In a similar fashion I assembled the pieces one by one for the back of the bodice. Once both sides were complete I joined them at the shoulder seams and closed the sides. For the ruffle sleeves, I made two tiered ruffles. Uh, the large one is the red and the smaller one is navy. And I finished the edges of the sleeve with a rolled hem foot on my machine first. And then I pinned them in place at the armhole right here and finished the join with a thin black bias tape for a neat finish.
then I ironed the bias tape and stitched on top of it pushing it on the underside. I finished the hem of the top with black binding tape as well and with that the two piece set is now complete if you like this video please hit like and subscribe to my channel uh, thank you so much for watching I had a wonderful time hanging out with you and I will see you in the next one here's the final reveal